Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built. And seeing as we are finally in summer here in Australia, I thought it was well and truly time we start fitting some aircon to Harry. All right, guys, welcome back. And uh, for those of you who are new to the channel or haven't uh, actually seen Harry before, uh, Harry was the first project on my channel, which uh, I'll put a link up above so you can check it out, uh, of the complete transformation of Harry over a, um, a few years to uh, actually what it is today, which is including everything from stripping down to bare metal and uh, painting it, rust repair, Sewing the interior, rebuilding the engine, the whole lot. It's all there in a, uh, in a, uh, a nice bite-sized piece that you can uh, check out. And um, if you haven't subscribed, think about subscribing if this is the stuff you enjoy watching. Now, Harry has um, been with me for a while now, and uh, now that I've had it driving for a bit, one of the big things that this car really hurts with is uh, it has no air conditioning. In fact, it has very little airflow in the car at all. And uh, I'll take you through and show you a bit of that in a, in a uh, bit. So I thought it was well and truly time to fit air conditioning to this car. And uh, that is where I've actually gone and got myself a, uh, a classic retrofit air conditioning kit. And now this is sort of the, uh, sort of the cream of the crop of uh, old 911 air conditioning kits. It's a, uh, basically, if you've got an original car, you can fit it without actually having to drill any holes or anything. It can fit straight up to your existing car. And uh, it's a, uh, a quite a complete, well thought out system. Uh, so well thought out, in fact, that uh, um, I know Roof uses it in their cars. I know Singer uses it in their cars, including in the uh, Singer DLS. So um, it's the, the high end stuff. What I think I might do first is I'll, um, as I'll just uh, take you through and show you what the current setup in this car is, particularly because this car is a uh, base, is a 1974 car. Um, and it actually originally had air conditioning, uh, sort of a, a dealer fitted aftermarket under dash thing that, um, that didn't work when I got the car. It was only sort of half of it was there. Um, and basically there is very little airflow in this car. So let me just take you in and I'll show you that now. Okay, so I'm sitting in Harry now, and um, those of you may be familiar with it, but uh, on this car, the only internal vents it had are these tiny little things on the side here, which didn't really let any air through at all. There were a couple of vents that came down under the dash, and then there was the, uh, the defrosting vent here. For some reason, on these 911s, they stopped the core windows being able to twist open, which was one of the best things in old cars ever, is uh, you can actually sort of see it uh, on the Al Ferrari there, that those, uh, those quarter windows twist open and, and you can duck so much airflow into the car. But on this car, at, um, at freeway speeds, there is no other ventilation in the car and um, you can have the windows down and listen to a lot of road noise. Or if you actually want to try and make the car a bit quieter, it gets very stuffy very quickly because there is no other ventilation in this car. So that is something I'm going to tackle at another time. But uh, for starters, let's have a look at the aircon system. Okay, so I thought I'd take you through the main components of the air conditioning system that uh, go into the car, so you can sort of get your head around exactly how it all goes together. So um, the core of the unit is this, which is the evaporator unit that uh, actually replaces the original fan blower. It's a very well-designed unit. It actually bolts into the 911s in the original position, uh, and uh, this is quite a uh, quite a well thought out core of the unit. So it's a new blower in here um, with uh, multiple different outlets and inlets and all that sort of stuff is all uh, already worked out. So it just it fits very nicely. It's a uh, a nice thought out system. Now in my case, we actually have two separate condensers. So. Um, Generally, the kit, the basic kit comes with one, depending on where you are. Because I'm in Australia, which we get relatively hot, uh, we've gone with two uh, condensers on this kit to uh, to try and get it to work extra extra well in our hot climate. Then you've got the dryer. That's another uh, component on all air conditioning systems, and uh, 
and this, which is also uh, one of the important parts of the unit, is the electric compressor. So um, instead of having a belt-driven compressor off of the engine that's all the way in the back, all of this unit will sit in the front of the car. So um, on a rear engine car like the 911, it's not a bad thing to put a little bit of weight, uh, transfer a bit of the weight up to the front. And this is completely electrically driven, so it doesn't actually draw directly off of the power of the engine. So on a lot of belt driven cars, as soon as you flip the aircon on, you feel that um, uh, that power loss from the car because of the extra work it has to do to spin that. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't actually uh, affect it as much in this system. But one of the things that they do recommend, particularly on these older cars, is that the original alternator is not really up to the task. Um, I, I think you can run it for a while, but um, it draws a lot of power, obviously. So uh, one of the things I recommend is to upgrade to this uh, monster alternator and um, this is uh, something else that they supply that uh, is a replacement, direct bolt-in replacement for whatever model of car you've got. So um, we are going to go through and start trying to fit all these things into the car. And um, I'm going to take you through now and sort of show you where we're going to put them. Okay, so we're inside the front uh, left-hand wheel arch of Harry, and you can um, you can start getting an idea of where this condenser is going to live. So this is the factory uh, washer bottle that needs to be removed to be able to fit the condenser. So first things first is all this is going to come out, and uh, we're going to see what we can do about fitting a condenser in this area. If I actually grab the compressor, you can sort of, the, the fan and the condenser, you can actually see that it's gonna fit in, in this corner quite nicely. Once I actually uh, sort of do a little bit of rearranging. Now you do need to remove this horseshoe bracket, which um, I could do because I had to modify mine with this, uh, this extra arm on it, um, because the condenser actually sort of goes through the original hole into the headlight bucket. So next we're going to do is going to remove the headlight and um, uh, and then have a look at mounting up this condenser. Okay, so now I'm ready to fit the condenser. Now the condenser comes uh, separate to the shroud. Uh, that's because, so in shipping, basically you can fit this bolt afterwards. So comes with a packet, you fit this uh, M8 bolt up through the slot. It's uh, adjustable for the, to, so you can sort of make it, make sure it fits. Um, I found sort of two thirds away along towards the back is, uh, is, is good for what I'm after. Um, the condensers can be fit um, anyway, depending on which way you want to actually connect up the, uh, the hoses, whichever may fits easiest. Um, but uh, generally with the single tab, facing the back of the car is, is the way to go. So to fit it, I'll just take the backing off of all the adhesive tape that's already fitted on the inside, fit the condenser in here, and then use cable ties through these holes uh, around the end to cause of the condenser to hold it in, four cable ties, and then we can work out how we're gonna actually completely mount it in the car. So here you see the cable ties holding it on all the way around and the bolt coming out through the top. Basically this will sit through here and the bolt will pop up through the hole in the headlight bucket and the nut on top, that should, uh, should secure it into place nicely. So the kit comes with this replacement horseshoe bracket. So this bolts on where the original horseshoe bracket did. So it's on to the internal side in here. And then also this hole at the top is designed to um, basically have the condenser go through. That hole goes up into the headlight bucket. And the bracket is designed so it can fit the dryer, just uh, sort of cable tied onto this bracket over the top and tucked in behind the condenser. On my car, that's not going to work. It's not going to fit because uh, my car's a backdate car. It's all different, so that's fine. Um, I might actually stick this in behind the battery in the engine bay. 
But uh, I do still need to make up some sort of bracket to mount this, this corner, which I think oh, I'm going to mount off of the bumper mounting bracket, which is going to be just a simple 90 degree bracket that um, bolts into the bumper mounting spot and then bolts into the, uh, the, this tab on the side of the condenser. It should hold it nice and secure. Okay, so I've just made a simple little 90 degree bracket up here and bolted it into the front bar um, bolt and then bolted it onto the tab on the side of the condenser. And the condenser's in and the other bolt is going up through into the headlight bucket. And this thing is rock solid. So we have one side mounted. All right, this side was much tighter because I've got oil lines going through here and some wiring and stuff. Um, but I managed to get the uh, condenser all mounted in. So that is in there now. I just need to make a bracket up to go from this nut here to the tab to uh, sort of secure it in place. All right, so I just uh, made up a simple little bracket here and this is gonna hold on this side. And at least then the first part, the condensers are mounted in the car. Okay, so the next thing we've got to fit into the car is the compressor. So this electrical compressor has to go into the car and uh, Classic Retrofit actually do two different types of mounting systems. So they do a left-hand drive and a right-hand drive. Um, quite convenient in left-hand drive cars. They have the smuggler's box up here. So you can actually get the uh, unit hide it all into the smuggler's box. You don't see a thing, it's nicely hidden, but uh, that obviously doesn't work on a right-hand drive car because you've got pedals there and uh, it doesn't have the smuggler's box like that. So for um, the right-hand drive cars, there is a perfect spot right down here, um, basically in front of the petrol tank next to the spare tire. And there's a mounting bracket and everything that comes with that. Unfortunately, mine won't be quite as easy because I've actually modified my car to fit my front oil cooler and I've got a bit of a sort of a duct that I've cut into that area. So um, I might still be able to use some of the bracket, but not all of it. So to start with, what I want to do is I'm going to pull this brace out, pull the spare tire out and get in there and see how we go fitting it in. Okay, well, so now it's time to actually mount the compressor into the car. And if my car was standard, like probably a lot of yours are, it would be quite easy because um, Classic Retrofit give you this, this framework that bolts to existing bolt holes in the car. So there's sort of one hole over the back corner here that goes into where your fuel tank is mounted, one to where the battery is mounted, and then there's another spare hole that's actually in the engine bay of, not engine bay actually, it's in the fruit of the, uh, the 911 um, that's not used. So all of those holes are already prepared here for this unit, but Mine is not going to be that easy, of course, because um, I've modified my car, so this is not going to bolt straight in, so I'm going to have to modify the bracket. But the bracket is so well thought out. Um, it sort of comes in multiple pieces. It comes with a bunch of the, the, all the bolts and spaces and stuff, because there's uh, um, where the bracket, there's a gap between the bracket and the, uh, uh, and the feet, and there's the spaces, the bolts, everything is already here. Um, there's a frame here on top to mount the ECU because there's actually an ECU as part of this unit to run the air conditioning so that it doesn't overrun the, um, the, the battery alternator, that sort of stuff. So it can actually function and not just drain your battery so that when you turn your car off, you can never start it again. All of this is all well thought out and well mounted and uh, I'm going to have to cut it up to make it fit in the car, of course. Because nothing can be easy when uh, um, you're working with a modified car. Alright, so I had to trim uh, all the side off of the bracket to get it to fit into the space, but it still bolts down to the factory bolting point. So uh, down here, you can see into where the battery mounts and uh, in front of the battery and also into the top of the fuel tank mount. Because of my ducting that um, I did in my oil cooler, I could use the back half of, of the original bracket 
but I couldn't use the other side. So I had to make up this bracket that, uh, that comes in and tucks in and follows the line of, the, um, of this compressor and raises it up. So you can actually see here, it's raised up on one side and I've managed to get a piece of square tubing. Um, so it'll be matching raised height. And that then will mount onto the original bracket. So I just need to uh, drill and tap some holes and uh, I will have this side being able to be mounted into the car and uh, we can move on. All right, so that was a whole heap of work later to get to where you would be if uh, you had a standard car, that uh, you would just be, have this whole system ready to bolt in. So um, I've got my stepped up block here to uh, raise my compressor up and, uh, and I've got my panel that I made up on this side um, that's all bolted in. So this will now bolt in and fit into the, uh, the front of my car uh, with some clearance. So uh, now I've actually bolted the ECU onto the top of the unit already. And uh, now it's time to actually start sort of connecting up some of these wires together. Um, there's either a, um, uh, just a straight joining post or this is an isolating um, relay to uh, sort of isolate the power to the unit. So I'm gonna start uh, sort of bolting these onto this, uh, this little bracket on the front here. Um, bolt these things on and start connecting them up so you can sort of see how everything runs together. All right, now I've pre-wired all of this up here. Now, um, I'll just show you the wiring diagrams. They're really clear and easy to see. So it, it makes life pretty easy. But basically, I just uh, bolted a couple of the, uh, the wire connectors onto the bottom of this switching relay. And um, there's a second relay over here. Um, everything's clearly labeled. You've got to put a couple of clips in and, and uh, this is how it's all sort of gone together. Um, and the last one is the power, main power going to the unit. Uh, just bolted it together with this uh, 80 amp fuse. And uh, once I put the, the cover back over it again, and then I'll, uh, I'll put the heat shriek on and we will be all connected. And there's three um, grounding straps now, which will go through the, uh, the forward most hole, this hole here, which goes into that unused bolt hole in the front, which I've run a tap through, make sure it's nice and shiny, make sure you've got some good clean metal to get a nice good earth and connect all your earths onto that point. So now it's time, I think, to bolt this all into the car. All right, well, it's nice and tight in here, but it all fits in nicely. Uh, I still have to do some bolts up and stuff, but um, that is quite a nice, tidy solution. I mean, obviously, normally it would sit down a little bit lower, sort of basically flush, so you can sit it underneath the factory carpet and all that sort of stuff. Mine, obviously, it's a little bit higher, but that's uh, just what I have to deal with on this car. So, um, next. All right, so now I've got my main components all uh, laid out. It's time to start mocking up some hoses. And uh, these are the, uh, the hoses. It comes with plenty of each hose. I think it's four meters at least of each different type of hose. And um, a whole bunch of these fittings. So you've got the fittings to do all the hoses yourself. And it's, uh, I'm pretty sure it looks like it's pretty straightforward. So um, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna start trying to uh, set everything up. Now, because I have two condensers, basically the way the routing of the hoses works is it, um, it goes from the compressor, which obviously compresses the gas, so it pushes it through um, a small hose up to the evaporator that uh, blows it into the cabin. That obviously expands the gas, so there's a big hose coming back from the evaporator back to the uh, condensers in the front and can gets condensed down again and all the way back through. And obviously there's a dryer in there and there's inlet and outlet ports and stuff like that. There's a, a diagram in the installation guide that shows you sort of the, the way it all goes. So that gives you a rough overview. 
But uh, basically what I've got to do is, I, because I've got two condensers, I've got to link them together so it will go a big hose into one of them and then it will uh, be a small hose to the next one and a small hose back to the compressor again. So um, that is the way we're going to uh, get the routing going. So I'll start um, trying to work out where I'm going to put some hoses. All right, so I've been going through and working out the hose routing. I've moved the compressor back out of the way and I found a perfect spot for the dryer down in this front corner. Um, it's out of the way. I've uh, just mocked up my fittings onto it so I know I can put the fittings on. Um, I actually use the factory bracket or the uh, classic retrofit bracket, I should say, um, to uh, hold it into place. I just sort of modified it slightly and that fits in there quite nicely. And the, uh, the hose, comes up out through the uh, through a bulkhead just behind it. So the hose will be able to come straight out here, join up to this fitting and uh, go straight into the dryer and then on through around, tucked around the side inside the engine bay all the way up to the uh, evaporator that'll be up here. And then the, the other hose will be able to come back and go to the uh, um, to this port here on the compressor. So. Doesn't make a lot of sense now, but uh, I'm gonna just uh, mount up these hoses, have a bit of a practice, and then I'll take you through how you actually connect up the hoses. All right, I've been having a bit of a play and uh, making up some hoses, and I was, I was worried about it at first. I thought it was gonna be difficult, and these are actually really, really easy to assemble. Um, the only sort of specialist tool you need is really sort of something like this a pair of uh, these sort of basic pincers for you know pulling nails out or whatever um, i've had this thing for for ages it's not a special tool in any real way um, and basically you cut your end off nice and square of your tube at the length you want and they come with a couple of these little uh, these a few of these assembly tools now they come as a complete sort of circle that you slip over the end of the hose and uh and, and put your fittings and stuff on and you can leave them on there but they look really ugly and the uh, the kit doesn't actually only comes with four of them what they suggest to do is to sort of cut notch out the uh, the ends of them so you can just sort of clip it on the hose and then unclip it again once you've clipped it on because all this thing does is just gives you the alignment of the um, the actual fittings so if I get out a couple of fittings so the basic assembly is you chuck a couple of the fittings on put your fittings on have them facing outward so you can sort of you can get to them um, and doesn't need any lubrication or anything this this slides in very easily into the end you slide it down until it's flush there we go it's nice and flush and then uh, you just need to crimp these two. So you start with the top one, hold it, clamp it tight. There's one, there's two, unclip the blue bit, and there's your finished uh, hose end. And that is super quick, super simple. Um, yeah, not, not difficult at all. And uh, yeah, so I suggest laying them out. As I said, you can put these fittings in and out the end without uh, actually putting the uh, the clamps on it. So I suggest doing that first before you clamp them in and make them solid. Because once you've done this, you can cut it off. But obviously, you've only got so much hose. Um, actually, at least in my case, there's more than enough hose. Um, I think he basically gives you enough hose so you can go to the back of the car if you need to, um, depending on where you need to fit the condensers. But this is looking good. So. Um, uh, let's do the final mountings onto the actual compressor itself, bolt it all in and have all of this end all done. All right, so um, everything is in and it's looking really neat and tidy. So I've got the, um, the lines in, going in, um, you can sort of see that there's the uh, dryer tucked into the corner there quite neatly and then I've run the lines down along underneath the fuel tank and up around and I've just let them run loose because I'm going to cut them to length when I put the evaporator in a bit later in the blower unit. Um, so uh, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tackle the wiring. Now I've uh, run this, uh, this wire here through which is the wires for the uh, uh, the fans. I've run it through to the, to, uh, the driver's side. I now need to 
um, splice these to uh, run through to the other fan. Okay, so my splicing is all done and now I have my power wire that needs a constant 12 volt power for the fans. Now it's all in the wiring diagram. So what I've done is I've opened up the fuse box. Now this thing is great. This is also from Classic Retro Fit, this fuse panel that's got uh, basically a direct replacement for the original uh, 911 panels. You've got the, uh, depending on what year you've got, he's got different ones for the different years and uh, it replaces it with a sort of more modern blade type fuses. Now what I'm going to do is uh, I've already gone through with my power tester and worked out that these uh, these ones over here, these are constant 12 volts, whereas these ones over here are, are switched, ignition switched 12 volts. So I'm going to take this, uh, this wire here, chop it off and uh, put it in the end here and then make a constant 12 volt circuit here by basically just um, bridging a wire in from the top of this fuse to uh, the top of this one because the power comes in the top, goes out the bottom and, uh, and then I'll connect this wire into the bottom here and uh, put a 15 amp fuse in and we'll be uh, good as gold. All right, this is the, uh, the the jobs that make it really daunting for a lot of people with the wiring, and the wiring is actually really well laid out in this. Um, basically, we need to group these two yellow wires together, and they go to an ignition switched source. So um, the way I do that is, uh, yeah, just getting my power tester. You can uh, test light, whatever. Um, test and see if there's... Um, anything's live with the ignition off, switch ignition on, see what's live, and then you can just jump a wire from the top of one of these fuses to the top of another one that's not being used, and then plug these into the bottom of that. So uh, for my ignition switch wire, the yellow ones are gonna go into the bottom here. I'm going to uh, bridge it off of one of these. I'll just work out what's actually connected to ignition, um, probably from up here. I'll probably just run a bridge over the top and, uh, and use this. So this will power the, um, um, the the main power for the blower. Um, the red needs a uh, a constant five volt, so I'm going to bridge it up here where uh, these are, these are the constant uh, power up here. I'll uh, bridge it up to that. And the blue wires, there's there's three different blue wires with different traces on it, are actually designed to connect up to things like uh, the rear window defogger and. Um, any other sort of major current draw thing, so that it will actually just put the compressor into uh, into low mode, so it doesn't use as much power, so it doesn't drain your battery completely and strand you. Uh, in my case, I don't have anything that's high draw current at this stage, so um, I'm going to leave these out for the time being, and these won't be connected to anything. Um, so all I need to do really is connect up these yellow ones and the red one. Okay, so the wiring is all done. So this is all now uh, basically wired up. A lot of the rest of this has just got to go to plugs. There are a couple of other things to do. I've still got to put the uh, evaporator in and the, the blower unit, but uh, that's going to take a little bit more creativeness, um, which I will show you in the next episode. But I think that is enough for today that we actually have the bulk of the components in. I never like to do things the easy way, so I'm going to be doing a few extra modifications to the car uh, in this case. Uh, I've still got a, uh, a bigger alternator to put in, and uh, there's a bunch of other little bits and pieces to go, so um, this is the first iteration. I am really happy with the quality of the kit. It's a very well thought out, very well um, developed kit that you can still fit if your car is not standard, because Let's face it, a lot of our cars are not completely standard. There are different things on different models. Um, most of them have been done. So if, as I said, if your car is standard, it should go in quite easily. You probably don't have to drill any holes or do anything. Everything bolts up to what's already there. It's only when you've messed with it, like this car, <laughs> that it doesn't work that way. But it's a great start. So um, 
as I said, there'd be a, a, a link in the description. Uh, go and check out Classic Retro Fit. And if you're enjoying this stuff, like always, do the things, like, subscribe, join us on Patreon, watch the videos a day before everybody else, ad free. And if you need parts for any of your Porsches, make sure you compare prices at PorschePartsByJeff.com first. All right, guys, uh, we'll see you next time. Bye.